So I hope you enjoyed that footage from yesterday, that old nostalgic footage. I got part two and part three. It's in three parts, and I, that muffler actually came out like a brand new muffler. You'll be shocked when you see how good it came out. It looks terrible. Anyway, early this morning, we're going to get an early, early, early start. Vlad is coming with uh, some, uh, some parts for his newest bike that he bought, some carbon fiber for me to work on. And Chris is on her way with the parts for the R6. So I'm going to have my coffee and get started. And actually the timing on this whole thing couldn't have been better. We actually have our bike pretty much ready to assemble. We did some extra buffing on it yesterday. That was very, very good information. That Bauer pad worked great. The work we've done on Chris's bike so far, uh, we, we need the parts. That's the only reason we didn't get to finish it the last couple days. We'll have that finished soon. And I think Jose is going to stop by too, so we should have a good, uh, just like the old days with the A-Team. This is, this is a very nostalgic day for me, and if I do get some time, I'll put some more of that footage on the end of the video. But I know you'll love that footage. So I tried, when I looked at the footage, I tried to figure a way that, not to talk over. I was using a microphone to talk over the footage, and I didn't care for the way it, light, the way it looked. So I'm going to try to come up with something better, maybe do an introduction. And then just play the footage that is, because John did such a good job. We got that converted over, and it is nostalgic. There is stuff on there that uh, Vlad is bringing over some carbon fiber parts now that he bought. I think he bought them off eBay, but what we're going to try to do for him is make them look like I painted them. So Vlad comes so early, he, we're sitting in the, in the uh, having coffee, he knocks on the door like a burglar. <laughs> yes. All right, this you got off eBay, right? Uh, no, I got it off. Oh, uh, this is not new. Aprilia Forum. Yeah, this is eBay, some Aprilia okay. Forum. Okay. I need a knife. If you, uh, knife. Okay, but it's real carbon fiber anyway. Yeah. It's not that shit. No, the, no, it's, a, it's a The fake stuff. stuff. It's, a, it's, a, it's a good stuff. Okay, let's see. This is for an Aprilia now, right? Yes. All right, this one's got a finish on it. Well, I just want to re-clear it. No, of course, of course. This. I want to make it like... Look at like, the difference. Like as, you do, the perfect. Yeah, as it look, it's perfect. This, this is what you buy. Now see, you could feel, you feel how... Well, this was, this was the original, but it's been on the bike for a while. Yes. This one, I guess somebody took much better care of the bike, but I think... Yes. No, 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 this is not. This is, what they did, they painted this. This is painted. Yeah, I don't know. Now but this, when this comes out of the mold, here's the problem you got. It's a, it's a problem. Look, this I'm drawing. This is the original Aprilia parts. And when this comes out of the mold, Vlad, this is made in a mold like that. I understand, but you, these are all original parts. Yeah, but when so you take this. this out, this has in the fibers sometimes is mold release agent you mm. got to paint it over and over when you do this usually it works pretty good right off the bat okay this is well, no this problem. is the original uh yeah. parts i'll make it work that, that, this is no I problem put all the, the parts I out let me see what April, you got uh, on a Aprilia forum yeah you want it to look like i did it yes okay exactly right like you did like last well, time well i know like a i know ah, jewelry, like right. a jewelry yeah and i know this is a german helmet oh, this is exactly what oh you know what, what? luciano wants this for his bike so I'll pretend I lost this, <laughs> and we'll sell it to him. Okay, so this is no problem. I, I got. The, you want this sticker on here? You, you want know me to what? take I'll that off? I'll leave the sticker on. Because, I can clear. Yeah, because it has. I mean, you don't even have to clear off if you can tape them off because it has <clears throat> information on the tires. Yeah, well, you know how tires, much tire. Yeah, I'm sure you know how to put air in the tires. No, ki no kidding. Take the thing off. It, 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 this is shit. Who's going to ride so? around with that? Okay, so take, take it, it off. Take it off. Come on. It's easier to paint it. Okay. Well, it's going to look like it's going to look beautiful. All right, so take it off. But these, these can be a real problem when they don't have a coating on them because you can't get the clear If you can the clear the stuff. label, that will be good. I'll paste it to, to the book. Why don't you take the label off with the hair dryer right now and take it home with you? Uh, and you can, I don't can't book. you buy these aftermarket? Uh, no. The, oh, take it off. Go ahead, take the hair. I like when I like to watch you work and then when <laughs> things don't go right, I blame you. Ah, okay. That's really on there. I'm surprised. Oh, yeah. The stuff we did for the Ducati, we took all the stickers off Luciano's Ducati in about two minutes. They assume when you buy this bike, you don't know how to put air in the tires. Yeah. You're a typical customer doesn't know how to put air in the tires. I don't know if we're going to be able to do this. I want to have Vlad send me an email of his accident, the bike, and we're going to try to put it up on a screen. I don't know if that's the easiest way to do it. So this is Vlad's bike. Look at the woman. Now, tell me the story. This woman drove over you? Uh, that's not good. No. 
You don't want to show those pictures of your elbow and your ass being all chewed up either. <laughs> That's now that how that bike you only had. We this story is we went for a ride. How many miles? We went about 100 miles, 150. Yeah, about nice that. ride. And all of a sudden, uh, Vlad went his way, I went my way, and then he had that accident. I wasn't there. So, so you used what is it? Forty dollars worth of electricity, and you still didn't get it. Off. <laughs> this, this is the most expensive. You could have bought the whole part brand new. I know. <laughs> Jesus, no wonder we didn't get rich yet. We are such workaholics. We have to work. Well, Vlad's pulling those stickers of. Hey, that was a shame that he had that accident last year. Right after we went for a ride, that was an F4 MV Agusta. Wow, that was such a shame. Anyway, he's okay. We're going to do those Aprilla parts for him in the next couple of weeks, and we'll show some of the tricks of, and it really is, it's a lot harder than you think to paint carbon fiber and get it to come out really nice. So what I did yesterday, I picked up a set of ratchet straps because we're going to have to work on Chris's bike, hang it from the electric come along. I didn't have a good set of straps. Luckily, Harbor Freight to the rescue. So I got the R6 in position here. It's so brutally cold out here, though. I'm going to go in and have me a cup of coffee before these people get here. Vlad comes early in the morning. He's early to bed, early to rise. Whatever. So it's 45 minutes later. $100 worth of electricity. He got one sticker off and one to go. Oh, my God. No wonder we didn't get rich. Oh, yeah, yeah. You got pictures of it? Oh my, oh, look at this, what's on the other TV, oh. Unfortunately, I don't have the cover, I have the bike. And what's underneath is watermelons, they just put a bike <laughs> After the check, this is not my bike, but it's the same one. Okay, same one, similar. Identical. These are collector bikes, or? They only made 142. Okay, it's a collector bike, yeah. How long does it take for this guy to get the cover off? I could have, I could have driven a Berlin in this time. Oh, that's nice looking paint. Wow. Oh, nice. What does that say? P Piega. Piega. What does that mean? No idea. Pork chop or something in Polish. Wow, that does look pretty good. Mondale. Mondale Piega. A Mondale Piega. It sounds like something you eat. <laughs> <laughs> Pierogi or something. Uh, oh, see the carbon fiber by the exhaust? That's another thing. Oh, That's a carbon fiber wrapped uh, uh, swing arm. Yeah, but that looks fake. There's, there's nobody makes a carbon. That's No, they do. <laughs> yeah, no, for, a, for a half a million dollar bike, not for the ones you're going to buy. No, but you can buy you can buy. Yeah, you can buy the wrap. I understand. No, you can buy this uh, swing arm for like five five grand from BST for Ducati. No, you can buy I it for can't. five grand. No, I can't. Buy I it. don't buy it. I buy my grandson Legos for five thousand dollars. That's a nice looking bike. Yeah, Let me cool. See if I can pick, get pictures. Let's right. see if he's got stickers on it. No, he doesn't. Uh, peel a, a sticker on a gas tank. How to put air oh, on well. tires. Yeah, that's. <laughs> Oh, that peel those stickers off. Wow, he's going to turn the key? RC51 wow, RC nice. engine. Yeah, RC51 is nice. So Honda engine, everything else is... Uh, yeah, if it's a Honda engine, it's going to be good. It's yeah, that's liable. why... It's so we start off our 18 work day. It had a, a 45 minute job to get one of the stickers off. Oh, God almighty, I don't know how I stay in business. The money is so few and far between. Now, I'm going to finish these, of course, during the week, but I wanted to show this. These are vacuum wrap, vacuum bag parts. These are made like aviation parts, so they're very nice, ultra thin, have a really, this, this will finish up beautifully, every part of this. This will be tentatively a little bit of a problem, but nothing we can't solve. And uh, if we can't solve, we'll invent a way of solving it. This is the same thing. So we got, let's see, one, two, three, four, Six parts to work on for Vlad, but I expect Chris will be here momentarily. Now it just so happens that Bauer Pad will will be able to definitely use that on Vlad's parts when it comes time to do the buffing. That'll be uh, well. I'm glad we did that test yesterday, and I really hope you like this old footage. I really like it. Very nostalgic. So step one is I got to get the come along. Got to get some straps on the bike. Get the back end jacked up off the floor. So here's the old lowering link, which we're still trying to figure out the best way to jack up the bike. Vlad's helping out here, but 
there's there's only a few spots you can hook this to and we look like we're gonna have to take the muffler off to get at that second bolt in there but okay. that's the adventure of being on the A team okay so we got the jack under there we got some straps up on the come along we could spin the back wheel and we ready to pull links they got these let me see what these look Yamashiki let me see what they look like they look real nice. Yeah, they are. Okay. Yeah. And you know, she can make decent stuff. Okay. You sure these are full warranty? Like the guy that warranted your bike that went on the car? I know. So, nice. Look at this is Vlad's ass. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, You're when you crash, that's what happens. I, I come back home. <laughs> I come back home. I'm in the sling. Well, I go to. That. I went to to, to eat, but I'm in the sling. I'm like, oh, my hand. Everything was hurting me for like. And you're making your wife worried on your hand and foot? <laughs> Oh, my wife sent my daughter to pick me up in the hospital because she couldn't take it. She, she wouldn't believe me when I told her, I'm okay, I'm alive. Yeah, you're alive. My daughter, she's a, she's a tough Your ass kid. is like a watermelon, but you're okay. Uh, well, the whole gang is here. We're going to have an A-team day, I can tell. We used to have A-team days every day until the A-team dissolved. Yes. Contrary to the child labor law. <laughs> It looks like to get the bolt out, we're going to have to pull that muffler off, or at least pull it out of the way. But luckily, we have some professional help here. So we had to take the clamp. The clamp, you can see, is a little rusty. It was frozen shut, in fact. Nothing, nothing a Harbor Freight Dremel tool can't take off. But now it allows us to get in at the bolts without a problem. We can get the wrench right in there, and... Chris will be able to pull those bolts right out. Yeah. The bolt will come right out now. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> You're holding the wrench wrong. It, that's it. Don't hurt yourself. You want me to get it? Or no. you, need the, you need an extension. Yeah. You may need the wrench for the no. second one. Well, just, just ratchet it off. It's, it's probably frozen in there is the whole thing in a nutshell. You got it loose. Now with the nuts off, we'll be able to put, I, I got to see if there's anything in the way on the other side. We'll be able to hammer them out. But while we're hammering them out, we have to gently lift up on the back wheel so that we don't have tension on them. So it's like a two-man job to do this easily. So the, the front side bolt looks like it'll just slide right out. But this one is going to have an interference with the catalytic converter. It looks like I'm going to have to lower or take, take that part down so I can get that bolt out. So if you see where the converter has to get lowered to get out the second bolt, that's that's what has to happen on the other end of this. And they, I'm, I maybe they even did it on purpose. They put these in backwards so that what's annoying about the whole thing is you got to take this whole converter and lower it out of the way. It's going to be it's well, we got to pull the fairing to take the converter off. So unlike an R1 where this is all out in the open, but shame on us, we didn't figure this out, but we will. I'm trying to explain to Chris about the geometry that's involved. It, this is not going to lower the bike that amount. You're, it's an exponential amount that changes because of the geometry of the bike. But this, this will be, now we can put these on with the bolts coming from the other side. We really had an ordeal getting that front bolt out. We had to loosen, loosen everything. And this has a welded exhaust system. We couldn't even take the catalytic converter off. But luckily, Chris came up with a solution. Yeah, right. <laughs> She went and got a cup of coffee. So one of the solutions is I'm going to put the bolts in from the other side. If the bolts, if you do a lower and link job on an R6, be aware, that is really a big job to get that thing off. And the bolts are put in this way. If you put them in this way, you don't, the only thing you have to take off is the muffler. But, well, this is, it's kind of a live and learn opportunity here. But we're going to grease everything up. Chris went in to take a coffee break. We're going to grease this up. Make sure everything's clean, neat, and ready to go. So now at this point, you have the two bolts, and I've got to have, of course, the back wheel is now in free play. I've got to have Chris get the wheel right in position, and from that side, slide the two bolts in on one side, then put the link in on this side, and put the nuts on this side, and then bolt everything back. But the whole secret is to this whole job, and worth, worth, worth watching on the whole video, is when you get it off, put the bolts in on from this side in. Don't go from this side. And that's, by the way, that's exactly what I had to do on the FCR, too. 
the round head ones are bodywork bolts, so just look around where you're missing a bodywork. And there's one in the back yeah, no. and one in the front. So the lower link is on, and we got to put the muffler back on. I got to get another clamp. We had to cut the clamp off of all things. You're a regular MotoGP girl now, baby. <laughs> Believe me, when you work on your own bike, it'll a ride will feel different. You won't enjoy it as much. <laughs> this is why we pay mechanics in my shop top dollar. Lay on a cold floor. Are they good to have rugs on the floor? Oh, yeah. Three layers of rugs when you're out here and it's 28 degrees. Yeah, this is this. I'm happy we got this done today. We didn't definitely didn't lose a riding day, that's for sure. No. No. Look at the coffee's brewing. Yeah, Chris is freezing. Yes. I oh, we're all you're cooking. You're talking about my cooking skills? Yes. yes you that's sacred stuff, you know. I know. Nobody's supposed to know how bad I am. Really? All right, she's got to kiss the girl goodbye. Oh, isn't that now sweet? She's Black bitch, right? Kiss the girl. The she's today. known as Black Bitch. Black bitch now. No how more. quick it all changes. <laughs> Black bitch. So Chris left, and the last part of this little thing is. I need to grind on the kickstand here just enough so that the kickstand moves forward by about another inch and give it a, a little more of a lean angle to this side. I'll do it one little bit at a time. It's and I'll put the kicks this the spring back on, but or you can buy that adjustable kickstand. It has a bolt and I don't like that either. The team is down, not down for the count, but down anyway. I've got to put this back together the way it was and get the grindstone out do a little bit of grinding on it I want to make sure i don't i can take a little bit off at a time i want to make sure that we got that so this is tight okay, there we go. okay so that's just going to grind some of that away until we get a little more of an angle. So I lowered the bike back on the ground and it's still, we would like it to lean just a little bit more. So I'll just repeat, I'm taking a little bit off at a time until I get the angle that's exactly right. Now, just for reference, the R1 lower link goes in. It's it, you don't have to remove anything. It's actually nothing's in the way. And I used a pingle on this, and then I modified the kickstand the same way so the kickstand slides just a little bit more forward until until I get the right lean angle. So the last part of this thing is going to be to paint these parts. I'll just I'm going to leave this for a separate job. But this was a big this was a big job. I know Chris really froze today. And getting that kickstand to lay just right, we could always grind a little bit more off, but I think I got the angle just about right. It's just about like my R1 is anyway. And this is this is the thing. I know Chris loves this bike. She calls it her girl. She used to call it a girl. Wow, this this feels. Oh, Chris, if you only knew. I know for somebody that that has short legs, it's all a difference in the world. It's going to be much safer to ride. It'll be much more fun, I'm sure. Now I'm just looking around. We got to do the seat. I got to paint the seat. So probably we got two or three. Well, maybe more days. We got Vlad stuff to paint. That's going to be a challenging thing, especially those old Aprilla parts. Sometimes they fish eye up to death. I have no idea, but I have a little bit of time at the end of this day. One of the things I want to do is see if I could dig up some more of that footage of Ray with that muffler, because that was that was so entertaining to so many people that looked at it. I I can't tell you how many people enjoyed that, probably even Ray. And and Ray's muffler, I'm not going to talk over the footage either. I'm just going to let it play. What, and I'll put it right at the end of this, what, what had happened is that muffler I don't think was salvageable. When I got done with it, it looked like he just took it off the shelf. 
So filling in the spots with the micro balloons, there's a lot of it. That's all high tech resin. And way back 10 years ago, my shop was totally different. And to be honest, I was totally different. I had more energy and more everything. So the fact that we got this much done on Chris's bike today and we got Vlad's stuff in house now, we have probably another week of work of working on these ancillary things because what's going to happen, it's supposed to get really cold in the next week. We're having a cold spell. So having this work to do down in the cellar instead of out here will be great. I'm going to see how much of this footage I can get. This muffler thing is in three parts. I think I can get part two off of it. John is going to help me get that off the, the DVD right now. And if we can, if not, this DVD is over. So anyway, I'll say it now. Thanks for watching. Now, before we go to the old footage, and I don't even know if I'm going to have time to do that today, but I, I wanted to do a little walk around, see, make sure we have the angle correct. Yeah, it looks like we do. But again, we could always adjust that later if we had to. That looks like this was a really brutally cold day, but it was a day well spent. Now, this morning this should be dry. It should be dry to the touch anyway. Yeah, it is. Okay, and it, it doesn't really look as bad as I thought it would. But it can't be sanded the way it is. Realistically, and, and even the runs will come right off. What we need to do is post-cure this, which hardens up the resin and makes it a lot easier to sand and use a lot less sandpaper. And the sandpaper is expensive, so I don't like to just waste... $20 worth of sandpaper for nothing. So the next step on this is go out to the oven, put it in the oven. It's going to sit there for two hours. Actually, it worked pretty good. And once that oven warms up, actually, it's, it's a very warm day, so we should be able to cure this very easily. And as soon as I close this up in a matter of minutes, it gets to be 150 in about Five minutes later, it's 2.12, so what I do is I always time it off my watch because it really does need two hours at 212 degrees. And actually, it's looking like a hot, sunny day. Maybe while that's in a post-cure oven, I'll uh, take a quick ride around town and see a couple of my friends that are going to be obviously riding today. This, this is going to be a beautiful day. And in the sunlight, you can see the... Uh, the carbon fiber parts show off a lot better. Maybe that's why some people like carbon fiber so much. They're willing to pay so much money for this stuff. Even the heel pads look good. Now one of the things I did when these bikes came out and were available at the dealers, up here anyway, the uh, all the colors except blue were available and I had to wait about two months to get blue because I really did like the blue a lot better than the uh, the other choices that were available and now that I've had it I'm I'm really glad I waited and again it's looking like it's gonna be a nice day I want to go get my hundred miles in and basically just use up look at the blue sky they said it was gonna rain today it looks like it's gonna be a hell of a day now this post cured up real nice. The drips and drools, they'll get sanded right off. The next part of this is going to be one of the labor intensive parts and see we already have these little hairs that hang out and dry and they're like razor blades. So before I do anything I want to get rid of and I want to do it by hand with a sanding block and some 40 grit sandpaper. And this is kind of labor intensive but I don't want to go and grind up But this resin usually sands out relatively well. And it's going to take some time to get this the way I want it. And then we're going to put on the last. In fact, I'll probably be able to squeeze some time in this afternoon to do this. 
But I want to make the side that we're, we're really going to see as absolutely as nice as possible. The other side I'll be a little less cautious with. Now you can see the high spots get knocked down pretty easy. Where we have the extra toe, that's just going to require a little extra grinding and sanding. Now, if you're doing this with a, uh, you could use a, I have an orbital sander and other kind of sanders, but the problem is you tend to go through into the carbon. The idea here is to only grind off the resin and not cut into the carbon, which, which causes it to lose strength. So by doing it with hand labor, just like waxing your car by hand instead of with a buffing wheel, you have a little more control over it. This is Ray's part. I know. Beautiful. Uh, that Karen's here inspecting your job, Ray. Oh, it was great. It's excellent. And by the way, thanks for the shirts, the deals gap. That was pretty cool. So I'll get the rest of this done off camera. This is really just going to be labor intensive until I, I can get this all sanded out. It's got to be rough and it's got to have a tooth so that the next layer of resin gets a good bite on it. Now the last thing is to just put a final finish on this with the orbital sander. But we can only go so far because I don't want to make the parts any thinner. I just want to get the low spot. And this is a vacuum bench that pulls a lot of the dust down into the vacuum. And what I'm trying to do is, and this is this is filthy work. I try to be real careful not to breathe any of this in. Of course, you need to wear a Wilson mask when you do this. Breathing any of this dust in is absolutely deadly. You may as well be breathing asbestos. It sticks to lung tissue like little staples. Now, I'm not concerned with the back. The back is, no matter what, I'm not going to get that perfect. But at the side that I'm going to see, I really want to get this as nice as possible. And the final thing is just to block in any of the areas. Some of these areas, they're going to fill with epoxy, so it's not a problem. And then we're going to start a process of putting the carbon down with one layer of resin, doing the post cure again, and then putting either one or two more coats, one or two more sandings, and one or two more. And we'll have to play it by ear because each one of these repairs is unique and different. Now, see, I'm just starting to go through. And I don't want to go anymore. That's as far as I can go with that. So now I got to clean this up with degreaser. That's about as close as I'm going to get this. And we'll be ready to cut up the herringbone weave and getting that on. And that'll require one more day of drying before we can go to the next step. Okay, now the next step, of course, on this is going to be it's going to be a little tricky. In fact, we want to get the resin on. This is the same resin, the high temperature resin. And we want to put that final coat of herringbone on. Now the herringbone always, in the sun anyway, looks a lot nicer than normal weave. All of the high end jobs that, uh, that I've done anyway, that people always want herringbone. I've used the herringbone on my R1 parts and on some of the Ducati parts I've made. And of course, any of the guys that have a Ducati really don't care what it costs, so <laughs> they used to pay in $2,500 for an exhaust pipe. But, hey, it'd be very interesting to see now if Ray, if this part holds up for Ray, because what I'm assuming, and if Ray has a, a temperature gauge, he can do the test for me, run the bike as hard as you can, 
and get a digital temperature gauge and see if this exhaust goes over 500 degrees. Now, when they're free flowing, they run a lot cooler than when they're restrictive and have any kind of baffling system in them. By quite a bit, by the way. At a tight, the uh, the exhausts that are on the R1 have a baffling system, so they really do run hot, and they've got insulation up under the seat. But the flow throughs, like the aftermarket people make, they don't pick up the heat as quickly. Yeah, I knew that was going to stick like flypaper. Now, what we want to do, this is going to be tricky. And for anybody that's watching this and may, may want to do something similar, well, of course, you need the material. That's the hardest part of it. And, and the, the material is relatively expensive. Now, this is where we want to put the joint is on this side. I don't know if this is going to do it. What's it, is this flypaper thing going on here? So you can still move it around for the first couple of minutes. Uh, Dick Hewitt has donated some material to our cause over the years. Some really good material. This is some of it that we're still using, in fact. Okay, so we got that side on. Now what's going to happen is, the side where the material is doubled, I've got to get this soaked in. Put those little toe weaves on the end, kind of as a cosmetic thing, because once this is post-cured, it should be it should actually be stronger than the, the part when they made it in Italy, I think this was made. Now it'll be this next coat of resin that'll, we don't want to sand through, because I don't want to disturb this, the carbon look. I'd like it to be cosmetically attractive. But the structure is all in that part, the material that's underneath. What this piece actually becomes is more of a cosmetic piece than a structural piece. Okay, now we got to get the little trowel going. Let's see if I, heaven forbid, I should put the trowel where I could find it. Here we go. And there's going to be some strings because of the way the joint is here. We get a rough cut joint. Now once this starts to set up, what I'm going to do is mix another batch of resin and go over to the bench where I can rotate this part. See if I mix all the resin at once, it'll be it'll minimize the amount of working time I have and I don't I would like to have the extra work time if possible. And I'd like to have time to get all these loose strings off, of course. All right. Now we got to take this over to the bench. And the next, the next part of this is to get it where we can rotisserize it. And we have to get on, this is, this is fresh resin. Because if we had mixed this all at once, what would happen by now? We'd, we'd already, this would be kicked off. And once it goes into that jello -y state, you're done. The idea with this is, you want to get as much on the joint as possible. Before I go on, now we got a little bit of a defect there. We can bring that around. And this is this is what I call babysitting material. This material doesn't really sit down the way it should right in the very beginning. All that will be trimmed off. And there's a little bit of a technique to just drawing this material out. Actually, to be honest, it's not as easy as it looks. This, this is a relatively difficult part of this job. Now we want to trim some of these. I don't want all of these on here. I want to make sure I've got the joint where I'm not going to see it. That's okay. The joint is going to be almost as far to the bottom as we can get it. 
Now you could buy material that has no joint. It looks like a sock. The material for this job then would have added about $300 to the cost of the job. I'm not sure you couldn't buy a new exhaust pipe cheaper than that, but... But then if you bought a new exhaust pipe, it wouldn't be one of mine, so... I'm not sure that's really worth anything, but I guess we'll find out. Anyway, you won't have to worry about going to cruise night and, and somebody has your exact pipe exactly what it... What I don't like about these pipes, when they commercially make them, they... They put a big decal on them, but I'm not sure I'd want to have that decal. In fact, one company, two brothers, lets you design your own decal so you can tell who they're aiming at. That isn't aimed at the Valentino Rossi, that's for sure. Okay, now i got to get the toe. Now, normally on these type of things, what you see is a hose clamp, which... A glorified hose clamp, I'm not sure that's... That's what I'd want to see on my own bike when I make my R1 pipes. So maybe a year from now, well, we wouldn't do anything like that till over the winter. I can get the parts machined up. Again, it's still my idea that over the winter we're going to turn this into a Ferrari bike, like the Ferrari aeroplanes. Because once I sand it, this you're going to see. And now i got to do the same thing to the other end. In fact, it's easier to work off the left end than the right end. Off the right end than the left end. Back on the rotisserie. So anyway, feel free to uh, share this video with any of the guys that have some interest in motorcycles or carbon fiber work or both. So what's what's nice about this is you will not see the hose clamps, which is I guess a minor issue. Carbon fiber looks three-dimensional when you look through the resin, which is the reason some of the young kids like it. And they, they make fake carbon fiber that it's really just tape that looks like carbon fiber and they glue it all over their bike like a Christmas tree. None of that for race drop, trust me. You know what's sad is a lot of people that see my R1, I, especially down at Motorcycle Mall, where they really, uh, they got a lot of, the, they actually sell these fake carbon fiber things that you glue all over the bike. You, uh, the kids walk right by and they don't even realize that's not fake carbon fiber heel pads and the seat and all the other stuff. It's real carbon fiber. And by the way, this is real carbon fiber stuff. This is, if you were making an airplane, this is the material you would use. This is all aircraft quality stuff. And of course, the next step on this is the babysitting. I've got to, I got to kind of rotisserize it and move this resin around. I'm going to let all the drips go out on the back of the part. I'm sure everybody realizes you clean all the tools in acetone and then first acetone and then alcohol. Now we're going to have about a half hour of doing just what I'm doing right now. And what this will do, this will help fill in any of the low spots. And it'll keep, when I'm done, I'll put the, put the part on the rotisserie in such a way that all of the extra material is going to make drips on the bottom. Of course, this gets to be almost like masonry work where you're moving cement around and you're trying to get it level and... You want to get it right to the last minute where, you see now i got a, a piece here that's not behaving. Now on the alcohol motors that we run in the model planes, the alcohol motors of course don't get anywhere near as hot as gas motors. And gas four cycle motors get even hotter than gas two cycle motors. This aside to dry overnight. Then it's going to go to post cure, two hours in the oven, 212. Then we're going to sand it and get as nice a finish on it, and then put a final coat or two coats of resin, depending on how 
how this is all going to dry up. We're going to have drips, so I'll be babysitting this from, from minute to minute. Again, it's a window of about 45 minutes to an hour in this temperature right now. Why I like to do this in colder weather is I keep the shop cold. I just shut the heat off, let the temperature go down to about 60 degrees, and then this material gets very thick. And the material itself, then I can I can move it around almost like Jello, where I I really can't do that now. We're just going to clean this up. That little resin that stays on there isn't going to hurt anything. In fact, it'll keep it from rusting when the chrome wears out. And Ray, I know you're going to like having a, a real Windy Ertnowski part on your motorcycle. I hope this holds up for you. If it doesn't, feel free not to tell me. I think it'll be fine. I know the aircraft parts hold up. My stuff, my commercial stuff, holds up pretty well. So I have a lot of confidence. Hopefully not overconfidence. Okay, and the rest of the babysitting we don't need to put on. You get, I think anybody that's watched this so far can really get the idea of what we're trying to accomplish. And I just don't want that bottom to be as drooly as it has to be. If we were going to see the back, the nice thing about some of the motorcycles, you, you only see one side of the exhaust pipe. That's nice. Makes it easier to make a part, makes it easier to repair a part. Now I got to do the cleanup. I got to clean the caps with alcohol, acetone and alcohol, clean up all the tools, get the gloves clean, put a fresh set of gloves on because every time I touch the camera with, if I touch the camera, even turn it on and off, I've already ruined the switch on a, on a $500 camera, getting glue in the switch. Now the only issue we're going to have is usually where there's a, this is where our repaired area is. I don't know if that's going to discolor in time or not, but when this is done, this is going to have a nice look. Of course, have a, it'll have a smoother finish in the final part. And that's going to dry overnight. 